Live from the bodacious Cretaceous, from before the dawn of time, or even the internet. Found in a jar in the ruins of Nag Hammadi, we bring you the collected writings of the Trans Pterodactyl. Now let's see what the old bird has written for us tonight. From the high desert above Alamogordo, New Mexico, we now take you to Studio 5. Studio 5, Studio 5, Studio 5, Studio 5. Good evening. And welcome back to Studio 5. A few months back, I wrote a response uh, to a lesbian writer named Lily Cade. In a nutshell, she hates trans women and wants them all dead. So my response is called, The Call to Killing. Subsequently, I've run across a couple of public figures who share her point of view. One is the Reverend John MacArthur. He has about 700,000 followers on YouTube and apparently speaks before church audiences. In a recent sermon, he said that the Prince of Peace finds all gay people, transsexual people, and even transvestites an abomination in the eyes of the Lord, eternally damned and marked for destruction. Now this is unsurprising. It's biblical boilerplate. But he took it a step further and flatly stated that if Christian communities here on earth did not seek out and kill these people, they will, in his words, be guilty of a blood debt and would also be damned by Jesus. I could not help but wonder if his parishioners understood that he was calling for the murder of millions of people, including the lowly transvestites, whose only crime is the violation of some kind of biblical dress code. The other figure is United States Congressman Paul Gosar. He describes himself as a proud Catholic Christian. He also sent out a tweet regarding the mass school shooting recently in Uvalde, Texas. In it, he makes the utterly baseless claim that the shooter was a transsexual. Now, if Mr. Gosar was just some drunk guy shouting at his television set and sending out random tweets, I would not pay any particular attention. But this is a sitting United States representative? It reminds me of the story when King Henry II of England was getting a great deal of trouble from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Becket. The king was recounting the difficulties that he was having with the good bishop, and he loudly proclaims in front of his council of dukes, Will no one rid me of this turbulent priest? Shortly after that, Becket winds up dead. And although Representative Gosar is not yet calling for murder, it would be naive not to see him setting the stage for it. So let's keep Lily Cade's ironic bedfellows in the back of your mind, and let's get back to my response to Lily's article. Part 1. Carbon Sequestration Lily Cade is an actress, writer, and a lesbian who wrote an article which she placed on her personal website. Its text was subsequently reproduced in full on Newsweek Magazine's online site. I read this text and then went out for a long walk. It would not be unfair to call it a polemic. Very briefly, and I won't go into detail, Ms. Cade hates trans women. She characterizes trans women as evil child rapists and flatly states that, quote, if you left it up to me, 
I'd execute every last one of them personally, unquote. Although her polemic proposes the execution of every trans person, for clarity's sake, it is the trans women she is really aiming at. I think this is a bad idea for several reasons not the least of which is the fact that I'm a post-op transsexual and I would certainly be high on the list for liquidation. In any case, I thought it would be worthwhile to take a look at what it would actually take to do what Lily says needs to be done. And I have qualifications regarding the project Lily proposes. I'm an engineer and a German. And we Germans wrote the book on how to get rid of a large number of civilians. Lily does not have to reinvent the wheel here. So let's sketch this out, shall we? The USA has a population of roughly 333 million people. I've seen figures of 1% regarding the number of trans people, but I think this is too high. So why don't we say that the really egregious trannies, you know, hormones and surgery, who deserve to be on the initial list, are 0.15% of the population. In round numbers, this means that 500,000 people need to go. The first thing is that as much as Lily might want to personally kill each of these people, she physically can't get to all of them by herself. That's just a fact. She's going to have to have an organization, or at least a network, in the major metropolitan areas. So let's assume that she can get the organizational stuff accomplished. My specialty is the engineering. Now, if you need to kill dozens or even hundreds of people, it does not matter much how this is done. But once you have a program to kill thousands or tens of thousands of people, you will run into the exact same problems the Germans had in 1942, which is how to transport bodies and how to dispose of bodies. I will suggest the same proven technology developed by the Germans, which is the gas van. It is the go-to apparatus for any medium-scale liquidation operation. It has endless advantages, some of which are not obvious at first glance. Simply put, the gas van is a box truck that has been modified slightly to route the exhaust pipe up to a hole in the cargo area of the truck. The exhaust then kills anyone who spends much time in the back. And the piece of tubing required to do this is under 10 bucks. Aluminum dryer vent will do just fine. I think the Isuzu NPR truck is the perfect truck for the job. They're maneuverable, reliable, and get good fuel economy. And anyone who can drive a car could drive this type of truck. You don't have to have a commercial driver's license. Next, your teams of liquidation specialists do not have to have experience with poison gases, deadly chemicals, or complicated equipment. Anyone who can press down a gas pedal can get this job done. The gas van also minimizes the use of guns in the liquidation process. You really don't want to shoot people in their homes or apartments. You will upset the people next door and end up paying out a lot of money to landlords for the replacement of carpet. The next advantage regards safety. Transporting people to a ditch where you intend to shoot them is risky. When you open up the back doors to your transport vehicle, the last thing you want is a group of hysterical people boiling out, some of which may try to hurt you. The gas van neatly solves this problem. Everyone in back is dead, or dead enough, by the time you get to your ditch. All that's left to do is bury them. And the last thing I want to say is that Lily may not be aware of this unique aspect of the gas van. The gas van will allow those being liquidated a final opportunity to accomplish a small contribution to a greener planet. Physiologically speaking, human hemoglobin soaks up carbon monoxide like a sponge. In fact, 240 times better than oxygen. This is how it causes death. 
so that each body you bury in the ditch has done something very eco-friendly. It has accomplished carbon sequestration. Part 2. The Dogs of War Lily makes it clear that she sees me as a mad dog that must be put down without remorse. So be it. Now, therefore, I shall speak for the dogs. If the liquidation of all the trans people ever came to pass, the very last people likely to be in control of this process would be a panel of righteous lesbians. There are, at this moment, people who are already on the record as willing to carry out exactly this program of murder. I'm talking about right-wing Christian extremists. And although they might accomplish your proposed program, it is highly unlikely that the murder would stop with the trans population. You could kiss all your gay male friends goodbye, and then maybe Muslims or maybe the Jews... And when the nocturnal death squads in their black balaclava masks run out of trannies and Muslims to murder, lesbians might also rise to the top of that list. So think carefully if you would open up the sluice gates of murder. The mechanism gets rusty with blood, much easier to open than it is to close. And it's been said many times before that the dogs of war once unleashed are no longer your dogs. Part 3. The Easy Way Out I went to Home Depot and bought a piece of dryer vent to bring up on camera here. I lied to you before. It actually cost $11.99 and not 10 bucks. My point here is that once you achieve the will to kill, the apparatus is trivial. This piece of tubing is trivial. And yet, it can turn a commonplace delivery truck into an efficient killing machine. So I have a question for Lily Cade, and it is this. Are you willing to have a person brought before you, bound hand and foot, on their knees looking up at you, no hood, no blindfold. Let's do this old school. And let's make this really gritty. It would be highly likely that the person you claim needs some killing has not murdered or raped anyone or even robbed a convenience store. And are you willing to take a baseball bat and dash their brains out and be splattered with blood, gore, and bits of bone? And if you are not willing to participate fully in the killings you are advocating, how is it that you are not asking others to do your dirty work? My friend Janie asked me why I was spending time writing about Lily Cade since the controversy seems to be fading all on its own. I thought about it. My answer is this. Maybe somebody might think twice about calling for the elimination or liquidation of some group of people if they thought about what it would be actually like to have to do it themselves and just how easy it is to take someone's life. So in closing, I've made an illustration to go with these comments. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>